Hey y'all, Zach Ewing here uh, in El Paso. If you've been following me on Twitter, you know it's been quite an experience getting here. But I did make my flight in LA and I am here in El Paso. I am rested, I'm washed up, I'm all pretty looking for uh, tonight's big Cal State Bakersfield men's basketball game at New Mexico State. By the time y'all read this or, or watch this, I will be on my way to Las Cruces, which is about 45 minutes north of El Paso. Uh, it's about 4 o'clock here mountain time and I'm on my way up there. Uh, to get to the game a little bit early, which starts at 7 o'clock Mountain, 6 o'clock Pacific. Obviously a huge, huge, huge challenge for the CSUB Roadrunners tonight. Also a huge opportunity for them. Uh, they lost, of course, to New Mexico State by one point in double overtime on a last second, people are saying 28-foot three-pointer by Ian Baker of New Mexico State uh, after CSUB had led most of the game. They were up by 14 points with just about 10 minutes to go. Uh, New Mexico State closed the game on a 14-1 to run, tied it, survived the first overtime. Their best player, Pascal Siakam, fouled out. They still ended up winning the game. That makes the Aggies 10-0 and all-time against the Roadrunners. And so this one is about more than just numbers for CSUB. I think they stack up pretty well talent-wise with New Mexico State, or at least with uh, the, the statistics of the team. They're both very good defensive teams. They're clearly the top two teams in the WAC, maybe along with Grand Canyon, which is ineligible for the postseason anyway. Uh, and, and so this is going to be a really good matchup. But for CSUB, a win doesn't necessarily get them the number one seed at the WAC tournament in Las Vegas next month. It would tie them with New Mexico State. Both teams will be pretty heavily favored in their final three games. If they finish tied, if they both win their final three games, the tiebreakers go all the way down to who has the higher RPI. Right now, that's New Mexico State by a pretty good margin. That probably won't change. And so no matter what happens tonight, it looks like unless New Mexico State were to stumble somewhere else in its final three games. They have a home game against Seattle. Uh, they haven't lost at home in 33 WAC games, so that, there's one number for you. They also have a road game at Rio Grande Valley, which is the second-to-last place team in the league. And then the third one, a, Rio, a road game at, at Missouri-Kansas City, which is somewhat interesting as far as a, a possible chance for NMSU to stumble. The point being tonight, probably won't win an outright league championship, probably won't get a number one seed for Cal State Bakersfield, but what it would do is give them a ton of confidence with just three weeks to go until the WAC tournament. It would be a signature victory for CSUB. It would be their best victory by far in their Division I era, at least close to winning at Cal last year. It'd be very similar to that. So uh, uh, beating New Mexico State at home would have been great in front of the first sellout crowd in 20 years at the Icardo Center. They didn't get it done. This would make up for that in a lot of ways. Uh, they wouldn't get a sellout crowd to see it, but they would get uh, a lot of people to take notice of them, not just in Bakersfield, but around the Western United States as, as one of the better mid-major teams on the West Coast. So it's a big opportunity for them. But again, New Mexico State's won 33 games in a row. They have presumptive WAC player of the year, Pascal Siakam. Uh, it's going to be a really difficult test. Cal State's inside players, Ali Ahmed and Kevin Mays, along with a couple of other guys, Hollins and Pride off the bench, are going to have to play really well. It's going to be a team effort to slow down Siakam. And uh, they're going to have to try to get him in foul trouble like they did in Bakersfield and just sort of hope to come close to a push on the inside so that maybe their guard play uh, can, can carry them to a victory over New Mexico State. Numbers-wise, the one place CSUB has an advantage would be in the turnover department. They force more turnovers than New Mexico State, and New Mexico State is quite turnover prone on offense as well. So that's one opportunity for the Roadrunners to maybe make some hay in this game. Uh, but it is going to be difficult. Again, 33 straight whack home wins for NMSU and 10-0 all-time against the Roadrunners. We'll see what happens. I'll catch up with you after the game tonight.